Good morning, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ. May the Lord be with you this day and every day. I pray today in the midst of all of what is going on in the world that you are finding peace in the Lord. I pray that you are finding yourself to have the patience of the faith that you may stand in the last days, that you may be found worthy to escape all things that are to come upon the earth because you see it coming and it is coming quickly. He said, I come quickly and my reward is with me. Stand up, my dear brothers and sisters, because he comes quickly. There is no doubt that he is on his way. You can see the signs. Everything he spoke of in his word is here today. But are you feeling his refining hands clutching onto you? Are you in the fire? Everything you are going through today is not of Satan. He is allowed to attack us, yes, but it is all you are in this world. This world is where you are in the fire of refining. Everyone is in the fire of refining. And Jesus has you in his hands. He said, I will have you in my hands and I will refine you. In um, Malachi, he said, let me read this to you. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering of righteousness. Yes, the word Levi is there, but remember we are adopted in. We are adopted in to the family. But his refinement is not only for them. He's, Jesus tells us he is the refiner. Jesus will refine you. Now, I did see a beautiful, it was just one of those little reels or, or short clips where you see and you're just swiping through. I saw it a few days ago. I cannot find it again. But it was the most beautiful thing on the refiner because a young lady had the question, what, what does it mean he will sit and how do you know when to stop refining, when you're in the fire. And we are in the fire every day. But the fire is to test us. In Zechariah it says, I will test you in the fire. We are in the fire being tested, just as Job was tested. We are not Job, but we are still tested. And we are in the fire. Everything that happens around you, health-wise, um, mockery, um, people coming against you for your beliefs, people coming against you for your gospel, those with their new gospels, everyone coming against you, you are called, um, well, you're called terrible things, slandered for believing in Christ. The words, because they're nasty, I don't remember them. Isn't that beautiful? God doesn't want me to speak nasty words. But you know you are being called things that are not nice because you believe and that you believe in the word of the Lord. Not in the word of man, but the word of the Lord. We must have patience. We are in the fire and he is sifting us through but what the young lady did in this reel was she went to a silversmith and asked him, what does this mean where he is looking and he is, all, is he always there? And the silversmith roughly answered, although he did it precisely, but I can only roughly, roughly relate it. If you can imagine... 
that the silversmith Jesus has you in the fire and on you is all the filth, all of the, the bad things, the bad memories, all of these past events that don't belong in you anymore. And he's, he wants to get to the true heart of you. He wants to get to you, to your soul and cleanse you. And he dips you in the fire of this world and he's watching to see how you react. Every time something happens, he's looking for your reactions. But a silversmith is looking to see those little bits of rubbish being burnt off and they drift away, burnt off and drift away and then re-put in the fire and re-put in the fire until those little bits drift off and drift off. Jesus is waiting and watching your reactions. Are you drifting off those things that you shouldn't be doing? Are you leaving behind those bad memories? Are you leaving behind those unforgiveness of others? Are you letting go of your sin? Are you being true and coming together in righteousness? Are you changing? Are you cleansing? Are you allowing him to cleanse you or are you clinging to that? How are you reacting? Are you letting go? You must let go of all unrighteousness. Once you see it, you must let go of it. And that's what he's doing. He's showing you. And sometimes it can be as simple as a bit of vanity, pride. What have we to be proud of? Have we done anything that's worthy of proud? No, because everything we have done that is right is of God. He did it. Jesus did it. It is not of us. All goodness and righteousness is of God. So we let go of the pride and give glory to God. And what does the silversmith do? The young lady asks her, how do you know when you have reached the end and that you haven't gone too far? And what will happen if you take it a step too far? And the silversmith basically answered her and said, well, if I've gone too far, I have lost some of the silver. But how do I know when the silver is perfect? When all the dross is gone, when all of the, the um, bad bits are gone, I look at it and I can see myself in it. He sees his reflection. That's what Jesus is looking for in you and me. He is looking to see his reflection in you and me. That is the process that we are going through. And every decision we take, do we get angry with that person and rail at them? Or do we take off our anger because anger is of the devil? Do we see? Do we understand? Do we stand our ground and never lose the faith in the Lord? We are being tested, my darlings, and today is a day of testing. We are seeing everything going on around us. We know it is the time. There is nothing out there that is happening that was not foretold. We have... the interference with our bodies. We have the one world government. You think it doesn't exist, it's already in place. All of our governments are working for the one world government. You do not have a choice in your politicians. They are all working for the same master, the, the Lord of this world. Not our Lord, we are not of this world. But all of, the op all of the options you are given, they are part of the same coin, they're just the opposite side flipped.
from time to time so you think you have a choice. They have not given you a choice. They have decided ahead who will be, when they will be. It is this one's turn. It is that one's turn. They will try to convince you that you decided. But you have to step back. Look at it. And see how no matter which one you choose, somehow you still end up working towards the one world government. Even if they put a pause on it for a minute and act like, whoa, we're for you, they get everybody in and, and rallied around them and then next thing they're moving towards the same goal because they're working for the same deity. We are the children of God and we must never allow politicians to deceive us that is enough that is of the world we are not of this world yes we vote and try to hold back but know that your votes have no relevance in their world we are not for this world but Jesus is sifting us and he is getting ready to come. And he said, will there be any believers left when I come? He is sifting. He is looking. So many will not let go of their dross. They want to hang on to their belief that this political leader is our hope. They want to hang on to the belief that I can mount up a revolution and we can stop this happening. It's already happened. It's already happened. Remember, it is in the word of God. God saw it and he told us what it will be because in God's eyes, this has already happened. He is not taken by surprise, but we are being viewed. We know the truth. Follow the book. See what's happening. CBDCs, is that the word for it? The money, the, the money where you can't buy or sell, the coming increase in marks, all of these things, they've now got it. Well, we knew about those little patches, um, ramparts, as the Bible calls them. The mark was the rampart. Remember we spoke about that a couple of years ago. All of those things are ramping up. They've been testing it, but it is about to be fully rolled out. So we need to be ready and we need to keep ourselves ready, not for the world, but for the Lord, you need to stand and you need to be accounted for your faith. Every time someone comes against you, that is a test and God is watching. He has you in his hands and he is watching. How will they respond? Are they going to have the dross cleansed away? Are they ready? For the next, he said, I will never give you more than you can handle. So the testing will never be more. We go, I'm guilty, I must tell you. I must apologise to you because I felt so low. I, I let myself, while well, Jesus was testing me, I failed in, in this one while he was testing me and all of these medical things were coming against us. Father was very ill. He's starting to come good again, but he's been very ill. I thought I was going to lose him. Um, and it became me, me, me. I'm tired. 
I don't know what to do. It was all me. And I came into myself. And I should not have done it. But the Lord, he showed me and he gave me his strength again. And he filled me and he tested me again. And the next time, this time, I was able to see it's got nothing to do with me. It's all about him. And we are tested daily. You are tested daily. And when you understand it's not you, it's all about Jesus. Then you can put the dross off. You can let go of the anger of how dare the world make this happen. How dare they? You can let go. That's the dross. Because we don't belong here. We have, we are not of this world. We have our blessed hope. Jesus is coming. He is coming for everyone that believes. And so let that dross, let it fall away from you. Let the joy of Jesus when he comes look and see his self shining in you. Reflect him, not the world. Remove your bitterness. Remove your anger. Find your peace because peace is of the Lord. And understand he will come and we, our eyes will see many things. We will experience many things, but our soul needs to reflect the Lord so that when he comes, he can collect you. I am not saying that others will not be saved. This is not about salvation. We are saved. But this is about the blessed hope of rapture. And when he sees himself reflected in you, you are ready. You have succeeded in the patience of the faith. And he will let you escape all things that are to happen upon this earth to test all those upon the earth because you have already been tested. In every day you are tested and he is watching. Are you ready? Will you be ready? Don't put your faith in politicians. Don't put your faith in a new revival. The revival is for Israel and they are coming to revival. The revival is for the unrepentant world and there is coming. But there is also apostasy in the church. So whereas we have one side coming up, we have the other side coming down. You see it everywhere you go. Those of you that are in supposed Christian countries can see that the country is no longer Christian. The apostasy has happened. Your churches no longer speak the word of God. They speak the doctrines of men. We were told this would happen. And yet in countries that have not had God, God be praised, China, India, Iran, Yemen, countries that have been so based in satanic rituals, in satanic worship, there is revival of the word of God. And now in Israel, yes, Israel has a lot wrong with it. Yes, their leaders are like leaders everywhere in the world. But the people of God 
are coming to him in great numbers now. Their eyes are being opened. Their eyes were shut for us. Don't be prideful of that. But now their eyes are beginning to open. And our time has coming. It is time to be ready. Don't take off your wedding gown. Don't let your oil run out. We will be going soon. It's not a maybe. Jesus Christ said, I will come for you. He is coming. You are going to change. You are going to be quickened. He will quicken the dead and the living. The dead in Christ shall rise first. This is true. He spoke it. And we that remain alive shall be caught up with them. With them. So they're going up first, but at the moment they reach, we get there too. We're caught up with them. We don't have as far to go, but we will be with them in the cloud with the Lord, and there we shall be forever. Wherever he goes, we will be with him. And when he comes back to rule, that is the end of this dispensational time. When he comes back to rule for a thousand years, we will be with him. And we will help those on this earth who are still mortal to understand. You do not need to worry, will he come? But you need to know, will you be ready? Time's running short. Again, I don't know exactly when. But you can see time is short. If you have read your Bible, you know time is short. So, I pray that you will revisit the Word of God. And it's not just in the New Testament. It's not just in Revelation. He has spoken of it throughout the Bible. Zechariah, um, Isaiah, Daniel, all of these, all of these prophets have it in them the promise is true accept the promise realize you are in the in the fire of the lord realize you are so precious that he is sifting all of the dross all of the unforgiveness all of the corruption he is washing you he is cleaning you in the fire of this world. Praise his name that he will do this for you. This is not a punishment. This is a privilege that he would lift you and place you into the fire that all that is not desired will be cleansed away. And he will lift you out when he sees his, his own visage shining out of you. When he sees his righteousness in you. He's going to put it there. But he's also going to clean off all the rough stuff. He's going to get rid of it for you. And he's going to keep his eye on you. There is nothing that you are doing this very moment that he is not looking at. Remember that. We are not alone. There is not a thing you do or a thought you have that he does not know. He knows the hairs on your head. He knows you. So let him clean you up, accept it and have the patience of the faith and you shall be 
raptured. You are saved. So are many others. But you will be raptured and that is your blessed hope. So hang on to it. Don't feel this is all too much. He will not give you more than you can handle. Just have faith. As Abraham had faith. As Isaac had faith. As Jacob had faith. As, well, as Sarah had faith. As Mary had faith. And all things will become yours because Jesus is yours. When you reach out to him, he is your Lord. He's not just the Lord. Make him your Lord. Amen. So, God be with you this day. God hold you in his hands and sift you. May his grace, oh, may his face shine upon you. Imagine that. And his grace teach you to live righteously in this wicked world. And may you come to him in gladness not resenting what's happening, but thankful, knowing that it is all in his plan for you and that he loves you so much he's watching over you. And may this day be a day you are closer to the Lord, to your Lord, to my Lord. Amen. God bless you all, my darlings. Have a beautiful, beautiful day in the Lord. Amen.